most of the spiritual books, when you're trying to understand spirituality, they talk about one one half talks about stilling the mind so your mind is not caught up in the past, caught up in desires, and you're trying to get your mind free and clear. The other is working with Venus and trying to get desireless and not putting your lust to your desires in on your consciousness. So the alertness of Mercury can be alert in the moment, totally awake. And you don't have to be educated. You don't have to be highly educated with a degree to have a really alert Mercury. In fact, sometimes having a higher degree and higher degree gets you thinking about all the things you learned in the past and can actually interfere with your being able to be alert in the moment to whatever happens. So when you really when you hear about Mercury, you say it's how you communicate, it's how you think, and how you talk. It's not exactly how you think. It's what your mind gets attached to, what your thoughts get attached to. And so in that way, these thoughts and these attachments, these images, these desires come up, they affect your thinking, you build up matrices of thinking, and they can be distorted. So over time, it can take away from clearer decisions. Okay. So now another thing, when Mercury conjuncts the sun, there's two different things. At the conjunction, if Mercury's retrograde, it's between the Earth and the sun. And you have to, you almost have to work with your mind and think clearly or calm it down to be able to find your confidence. If Mercury is not retrograde, it's on the opposite side of the sun at the conjunction. And you have to find your confidence before you can communicate. Simple little thing, but in psychological behavioral assessments and trying to see how to reach someone, how to communicate someone, how to teach someone, how to get someone learning, these are important things to notice. It's not ex exactly, so there's no oppositions, but you have two conjunctions that have the conjunction with Mercury conjunct. Uh, I'm talking to the sun, sorry, deviating a little bit here. Um, we'll come back to that. So Mercury to Venus, it's, they can be conjunct on one side of the sun or conjunct on the other side of the sun. They, so they can come, but they're always going to be fairly close to the sun. So they're within a sign or two of the sun. So um, when Mercury is conjunct Venus and, and it works positively or when it's sextile, when there's a positive link, there's a natural ability to charm and use your charm to communicate to get what you want. There's a natural spontaneousness. It can be lazy. It can be there and not make anything about, oh, I like this, I like this. Oh, I get, a person can talk about what they like or what they want. They might, it's a fairly good quality for investing. Or, or for trying to buy what you want and making sense of what's valuable. But as soon as there's a stress at the conjunction or square, there's a challenge to use it too much and it tends to over, it's like the older sister telling the younger brother or younger sister what they have to do and how they have to think. It's almost too strong. It works fine, it works well, you can, it's not, it's just, it's a subtle thing. It happens within one's own character. So that's the Mercury, to Venus. I wouldn't take it further than that. When you get Mercury to the Sun, you have your confidence in your mind. Now Mercury can't be more than 28 degrees from the Sun, so it's usually in the same sign. Sometimes when Mercury is at a different sign than its Sun, than the Sun sign, it's easier to see the difference between your mind and your heart. When it's in the same sign, one tends to think one's mind and one's heart is the same thing. There's a tendency to put these together for the mind to be connected more to the sun. This is even more so when it's in a conjunction, when it's in the conjunction. So the conjunction of the Mercury to the sun, um, it can, it's t one can talk with confidence, but it's gonna depend on the style of the sun. If you have a Capricorn with the Mercury concerns the sun, they still can communicate and think and be alert with confidence but it's going to be very different. You have the sun in Gemini and Mercury in Gemini conjunct. They're going to talk with confidence about everything. So you're going to start to see the differentiations. But on a personal level and in a lot of mystical things, you're trying to separate, find your heart and separate your mind so you can find your heart and your confidence, the sun. And the conjunction can make you analyze and be talking about everything that you think is all about your confidence or lack of confidence. It, it merges the mind with the heart, but almost if you're thinking, if when you get alone, if you're thinking a mile a minute, it's hard to just be at peace in your heart without thinking, which is the center of the whole solar system. 
and the center of us. So confidence comes from that heartfelt feeling. So how do we get heartfelt thinking? How do we allow our heart to direct our thoughts? Well, it's a novel concept for some people. Uh, but heartfelt thinking is very sincere. It's very clear. It doesn't, it's much better than just rational smarts. So, but rational smarts don't think so. So the struggle between usually Sun and Mercury conjunct is, um, it creates a strong mind. The confidence comes in. And when they're talking, they're talking with a certain power and enthusiasm and confidence more than what most people have. This can be affected by outer planet aspects and be complicated or, or, or sublimated. But generally, the Mercury Sun is not a bad aspect. Strong thinker, communicator, traveler, making sense out of things. But there still is, um, it does put the mind and the heart together, which can be very useful or it can be, it can be a bit of a problem too. So, okay. Um, yeah, so those are fairly simple. You look at the sun in a chart, you look where the, you look where the Mercury is, look where the moon is. We're going to come from the sun and you'll see these, you see how far they are apart. You see the Mercury. It's easy to assess. And then the moon comes in to accentuate how the past comes in, affects the way you think and the way you choose things and your confidence. So these inner pieces all work together, but we're just looking at them. So as when we start getting from, as soon as we get past the sun, we have our mental confidence or we don't have our mental confidence. I don't want to go to school. Oh, I got to go back to school. I can't get a job. I got to get better schooling. I got to do is how you, th what you think you have to do to coordinate things. And and also, Mercury tends to make up time. I got to do this. If this is going to happen, I'm going to have to get this. I'm going to get away with this. I'm going to do this. Of course, you had alcohol and drugs. It, drugs, it certainly impairs all of this to begin with. That's That can be a Venus to Mercury problem. But to the sun, it's really about confidence and thinking and want to know what you know. You don't want to be called stupid. You wanna, you're going to be the one that wants to be leading with your thinking. So that's great for writing, communication. It's, it's generally good, a good sense. Not a, There's no bad aspects of the Mercury to the Sun. But the Mercury to the Sun, if you're not confident, that lack of confidence is going to affect your thinking. So if something else or some other things have happened that affect your confidence and your Mercury is conjunct your Sun, or you're, you're going to have trouble expressing the confidence. That lack of confidence will be expressed. You can't, it's hard to separate the two. Okay. So simple words, but when you start thinking of people and situations, it fills in very quickly. Once we get outside of the sun, we're dealing with outer planets as they affect inner ones. It's how we're thinking about what's going outside. Of course, as soon as Mercury is trying to, as soon as our mind is trying to think of what's happening with other people, things outside of ourselves, it's kind of an alien territory. It's not our mind's strongest within. It's a mental inner factor. When we start going out, we're minding other people's business. We're minding what's going on. We're developing game plans for the world, for business, for relationships. We're navigating. Then you see the kind of the traveling Mercury. Um, so now it can be, there can be any number of aspects of just the whole cycle with the outer planets. Um, so it's a, it's, it's, you're not, you're searching in a different way as soon as you watch Mercury to the outer planets. Your, Mars is your desire for experience, your use of force, your energy. Wherever Mars is, you're pushing for things. You're trying to make things happen. You're desiring to do things, not to get, to do. I want to do this, I want to do this. So if Mercury's in a conjunction square opposition or a stressful relationship to Mars, you're going to have a sharp, pushy mind. You're going to be argumentative. You're going to be strong-minded, quick to, quick to make decisions. The Mars may... Mercury is fast, Mars forces it, and it makes it faster, so it makes you quick to judge or quick to be, usually it's a, you can see an element of sarcasm when there's frustration, an element of speed when there's not. So these Mercury and Mars usually don't drive slowly, they'll drive fast, they'll go fast, they get a plan, they got to do it right away. They're, they're restless, there's a restlessness that comes in with Mercury and Mars. Okay, so I have a Mercury Mars conjunction in Scorpio in my third house. I have an intensity in my thinking. And when I get an idea, I got to do it. I got to make something happen when I push it. I'm very strong in my ideas. And um, it works really well for doing research and studying and teaching because I have ideas that work very well for listening so well. I have to make a real effort to listen to other people. 
because I tend to say this is getting boring. I want to influence the conversation to keep it going in a good in a high energy way rather than slowing it down. So when I so arguments, anger, temper, quick over quick judgments. Sometimes it can be really sharp, snap, quick judgments. This conjunction square on opposition, but often there's arguments. There's a stress. There's a restlessness that can cause headaches. It can cause um, it, well, arguments cause delays. They interfere with the clarity of the moment. If you're mad, you're not thinking clearly. So the Mars imposes challenges, battles, fights, wars, competitions on your, on your Mercury, on the way you think. So you can be competitive, Mars, to Mercury if you're thinking, if you have a difficult aspect of Mars to Mercury. There's some, there's other things by sign or by house that can bring in that competitiveness, but if you see the Mars to the Mercury and it's difficult last week, you know there's going to be a competitiveness. You know there's going to be a restlessness. You know there's going to, now, that can get warped by other planets, but it's enough just right now. Mercury to Mars, sharp thinking, quick thinking, restless, edgy, but a little bit harsh, a little bit sarcastic. And because there's that harsh competitiveness, there's not a lot of peace in talking with other people. There's a tendency to force issues or to argue or discuss, to challenge how people are thinking and um, to have to do things right away to try and make things happen. So that's the influence of the Mars on the Mercury. As it, once you see that behavior on the, on the Mercury, so it depends how you're looking at the Mercury and what circumstances and what way. But if you're looking at a kid you're trying to bring up, you're going to have to teach them patience. You're going to have to teach them that it's not good to throw things or hurt other people. You're going to have to counter the Mars influence a little bit, keep them physically active. So Mars, Mercury, and Jupiter can be really well coordinated. Like a lot of sports people will have this. A lot of writers might have this. They have something to say and they got to do it. You know, but um, there's still a tendency to be a little over aggressive with the mind. And actions will follow thoughts. So if you're over aggressive, what happens? Things don't work out quite the way you want, run into our oppositions, run into struggles, and not everybody listens as much as yours. You're not always invited somewhere or something. Just it it affects the thinking or the way we perceive and and our alertness. So, but but it is Mercury is a communication thing. It's kind of a, a perception thing. Mars is an energy thing, putting out so restless, energetic perception. When it's an easy aspect, there's a kind of kind of a an easy spot. To, there's not the stress factor to say. There's an alertness. I mean, remember, there's always 360 different aspects, so there's always a relationship between your mind and your energy, for better or worse, strong, weak, whatever. It comes and it goes in phases. It goes through its cycles. But Mars, active energy, desire for experience, that desire that to do things, to force things. I got to do this. It can control your mind. I got to do this. A person can be obsessed with what they have to do. They can be dominated by what they have to do. I'm not think about what's nice or what would be better or what mum likes or whatnot. Often with the Mercury Mars. That anger comes up and it, it guides you what you're going to do. Okay. So it's not entirely bad because it's a really sharp mind and sharp thinking. But sometimes it's too sharp and not considerate enough. So these effects would, it would come out and show like that. When you come to Jupiter, when you get out to Jupiter, Jupiter is your understanding of Mars. And understanding of Mars and Saturn, what responsibilities are there, what I've done, what I've done with this much time in my life, what I'm working at now, my understanding of what I'm doing. I'm working somewhere, I don't really want to be here, I want to be, oh, I'm going to change it one day, but I'm hanging in right now. That attitude, of, that understanding will affect the way you think. 